Jesus.
shall have a brief period of scripture reading. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Revelation 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. 
And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. Amen. Your healing is sure. Amen. Your salvation is sure. Amen. I wonder what you might come here with. The Lord will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's time for us to worship the name of the Lord. Rise to your feet. I should give him all the glory. I should give him all the thanks. Give him all the praise. He's the Alpha and Omega. Give him all the glory. He deserves it all. He's the God of full redemption. Your redemption is here tonight. Give him all the praise. He's exalted forever. Give him glory, give him praise. You cut hands, and seize and send your rays. You count for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be. 
All I want to be, all you want me to be, your service is my desire. I so want to know you and in your love grow with heavenly power. I yield my life to you, I'm willing to be used wherever you beat me, I'll go. So Lord Jesus, daily, I pray that you break me your love I might show. have uh, two fellows here. He's uh, uh, 18 years old. He has, he has been having sore throat. That is infection of the throat. Tonsillitis for the past two days, now three days now. But at the prayer of the man of God, he received his inter healing. Let's hear from him. Pray! I'm the most happiest person here. My name is Theophilus Katon Chidunku from Ukari region. 
Yesterday, since on Wednesday, I was having severe pain in my throat. And the pain persisted since that Wednesday, yesterday, Thursday, even while we were in the car. Even while I was seated down there, I was shouting, shouting, because I want this pain to go. I was telling my friend that today, me, I will share my own testimony. Because the pain was too much. If I want to, anytime I'm eating, the, he's, he's disturbing me. I'll be telling him, my throat, my throat. Then he, he said, no problem, no problem. But after the prayers of the man of God, immediately, that, the, the, that last amen, that last amen. Immediately he said the last amen. In fact, it's as if I was the only one shouting. And as I was shouting, I kept on coughing. And I was testing myself. And the pain was no more. And then I swallowed saliva as I could not do before. And I felt the pain no more. Praise I believe God. The Lord. I believe God. Praise the Lord. The pain no more. And your pain no more in Jesus' name. Very quickly, the second testifier. Second testifier. Praise the Lord. Why they are giving testimony. Keep checking yourself. Keep checking yourself. Your miracle is there. Keep checking yourself. All the sticks rising up. Interview them and let them come to testify. Praise the Lord. The Lord has done it again. We have here Kingdom Oliver, 34 years. For the past 10 years, he has been masturbating. And he has tried all his best to get rid of it. But it, it was not possible. But at the prayer of the man of God yesterday, God gave him the breakthrough. Let's hear from him. Praise the living God. My name is Kingdom from New Era District. Um, five years after my conversion, that was 2007. Five years after my conversion, before this thing, I begin to experience this thing in my life. I love relationship with God. When this thing, because there was a book I was studying on the net, experiencing God. So, when I became used to the net, then before I begin to divert to this uh, some web website that was very bad, so I found myself addicted to it. Every year I fight to 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 do away with that website, but I couldn't help myself. Praise the living God! I said this year. As the man of God is coming this town, I'm going to receive my liberation. And if and after that, after that, I was struggling that let me marry, whether that thing will go away from me. But after my marriage, also, the thing still continue. But to the glory of God, yesterday I prayed and I found out that that flow of relationship with God and I came and attached together and I'm celebrating God now in Jesus name wonderful can't you put your hands together for the Lord this is one of the greatest miracles God can do for any man freedom freedom from immoral act you are free in Jesus name praise the Lord Next testify. Praise the Lord. Please, then we have shout. Hold on, hold on. Shout of testimonies everywhere. Please bring them out. Even though uh, you don't have way, make way, make way, make way. Ushers, help them. We want to see them. Don't hide your testimony at the back there. Keep coming to the front. Praise the Lord. We have uh, Sister Rehab Nelson here. Sorry, we have uh, Sister Godslove Matthias. Uh, she's, she has been having some problems, you know, heart pain for one year. You have been having high problems. You cannot see through, through the light. And you have been having, they, they call it, you know, they call it the medical palace photophobia. And because of it, you have not been able to see very well. And also, she's having heart burn for, for the past one year. But at the prayer of the man of God yesterday, he was, she received her instant healing. Let's hear from her. Praise the Lord. My name is God's love, Matthias. I want to thank God for what God has done for me. I'm 
I'm having two issues in my life. One is my, uh, I, I cannot make use of the light in the night to read. I can't even enter inside this. If, if I'm walking under the sun, I, tears will be coming out from my eyes. I feel pain. But I thank God for how God used our Father in the Lord to heal me. Right now, I'm, the same thing with the heart ache I'm having. All have just gone. Everything, the two challenges in my life have just gone. I'm now healed. I'm free. Thanks. I, I want to say, God, thank you for all you have done for me. Put Praise your hands together Lord. for the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. Heartburn gone, eye problem gone. She cannot stay in the light. Bright light, no more problem with her eyes. Put your hands together for the Lord. Let's listen to the next testimony, please. While others are testifying, check your own. Check your own, check your own, check your own. double portion for our sister, Sister Aria Nelson. She had the foreign body in her right finger for the past uh, one month now, but at the prayer of the man of God, it was healed. And also she had been having no back pain, severe back pain for the past five years. We call it global lundosis, and by the grace of God, at the prayer of, of the man of God yesterday, she received a miracle. Let's hear from her. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Sister Ray Abnelsom. I'm from Magami, Jalingo. I give God the glory for what he has done for me. One month ago, I was cooking. I have a piece of fish in my finger. It's a deep pain that it always pierced my heart. But at the prayer of man of God yesterday, by the grace of God, when I went back home around 12 midnight, then I discovered that the bone gets out himself. Then I just use needle, it gets out. I give God the glory for that. Also, for the past five years, as an effect of the work I was doing, I have a deep pain on my lower back ache. So I give God the glory yesterday. Also, after the prayer of man of God, the pain disappeared. Now I'm free. I give God the glory. Praise the Lord. Disappear forever. Let's have testimonies from online. We'll come back here again. Great things are happening online, and uh, we have um, an update from the testimony we told you earlier. Um, further confirmation has been done, and uh, salvation has been completed in the life of the young man who had come with charms, and all the charms in his house have now been brought out. He has surrendered completely to Christ, and this is supernatural deliverance indeed we also move now as we go to another testimony that we received online here is from the JS official Facebook page this is coming from Julius Victor from River State who says that um, he is a 22 years old person who testified of God's intervention to a supernatural liberation physical liberation from jail. According to him, um, during a one-on-one -on -one counseling session, he, he, he was taken to prison because of his involvement in drugs. And um, as uh, everything unfolded, um, the members of the, of the Deeper Life Church came to the prison. He was ministered to, he was invited to the crusade. He, had, he participated. And now, to the glory of God, he gave his life to Christ. During the altar call, he raised his hand, he surrendered his life to Christ. Supernatural liberation from sin and deed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have Adeliki Alice, 42 years of age, had serious pain and swelling in the left arm for about 10 years. And had been using different drugs, but supernaturally. After the prayers of the man of God, 
drugs stopped, solution given, pain gone, swelling vanished. Praise the Lord. Abdeyemiru, 30 years old, she's been suffering from nightmare for six years. She sought for solution, patronizing native doctors, all to no avail. After the dream, whenever the nightmare comes like that, she begins to have fear, she has challenges and troubles. But, after the prayers of the man of God, after she attended the crusade, she discovered that the nightmare came no more. She is supernaturally liberated. Praise the Lord. And now, we take you to South South Nigeria, Calabar Live. I went to the hospital. As I went to the hospital, I came back. I was laid down inside the house. In fact, uh, somebody from another company fight. I see them fight with a wife and a husband. The wife run, enter my house. In fact, he come and fall on me for the wound. So from that time, all those, uh, because of, because I was shocked. So all those wound and all this thing just happened to me. After I but God said no. Upon all this thing, I have started to get closer. I uh, mean the global crusade. Now in this global crusade, sometimes when I went to the global crusade. In fact, I me, I don't know what to do. I sat down for one place because from my head, from my leg, from to my head, it just swelled up. So after the whole thing, when my pastor prayed, he prayed for a finish. He told me, that's where you have problem. My brother, my sister, I don't know what to do. Before I know, for me to tell, I don't know whether I can touch the leg, whether I can touch the leg. From there, me, I mean, you are calling my hand to, I pray like this, I pray like this. But for all these things, after that, when I go to the house, the leg, all those swelling is gone. Praise the Lord. After that, after the program, another program, in fact, me, I went to the program, before I know, see my belly is swelling up like this, see my every way is swelling up like this. Somebody come and told me, say, see what you have. You get kidney problem. I say kidney, say yes. I say even though I have kidney problem, my cord has another one. Even though I, my cord can remove this one and put another one. Praise the Lord. Now the pastor, when I went to the pastor, or when I, my pastor finished the, the program, he told me, that's where you have problem. Me, I start from my leg, I start to my, to my head, and I saw, before I know, all this, uh, my belly is gone. Now, after that, all my head is gone. Before I know the last one, the last one, it come and happen like this. Because so we said that I have a uh, kidney problem. The last program on the year 2021. On, so I just go there. After the program, I see, I carry the Bible. I touch my head. I hold my, my tail like this. Before I know, up to today, if I can run 100%. Praise the Lord. All these things, I can tell you, I have an okay money to go to the hospital. You have a problem. Believe God, as God needed it for me, we will do it for you. In Jesus' name. As God did it for him, he has done your own. You can run 100%. You can jump 100%. Let's have another testimony from here now. Next testimony. Next testimony.
straight, straight to the point, straight to the point. Mention your name, your problem. Dr. Godwin, Godwin and Medu is my name. I'm a medical practitioner. Here we have uh, Shedrach Ugbu. He has two medical conditions. Uh, he, he had a fracture of the right knee, and he has been having some severe pains there. And then the second medical condition is he had a schizophrenia. This is also a mental problem. And after the prayer of the man of God, he just attended the crusade this evening. After the prayer of the man of God, he was instantaneously healed. Now let's hear from him. Praise the Lord. My name is Shedrach Ebana Ubu, and I was calling TSU here. My testimony goes like this. In 2011, I was playing with my friend, and we were playing acrobatic gymnastics. So as I jumped on the air to perform a gymnastic act, so on the air, my leg broke. Now in 2013, when I entered my SS3, newly in, in Gujarat, immediately when I stepped my foot into the SS3, I just lost my mental health to celebrate malaria. And then after then, I started laughing in the class every day alone. And all my classmates were confused, looking at me and thinking that I'm a mad person. They were asking me, young man, are you okay? I don't know what to answer them because I was also ashamed. And that was the first time such a thing happened to me in my life. So uh, my parents, due to lack of faith, they took me to Habalis, seeking for a solution. So the Habalis now detected that uh, he consulted his gods, and then the gods told him that it was my grandmother that was trying to kill me because she saw that I have a bright future. So in 2018, my grandmother now called us that, okay, she, that they should bring me, she's going to heal me. So after they took me to her place, she went and bathed me some set, with certain charms, claiming that she was going to heal me. At the end of the day, we came back and had schizophrenia. That is the present mental condition I'm having. But today, as I come to the church here, during the prayer, I was manifesting. And then the, the, my need that I was incapable of raising like this, today you can see I'm raising it. And the mental disorder, I believe by God's grace, is healed. But I'm feeling a cold sensation in my brain. And this thing has caused certain challenges in my academic life. My, my GP was, was very bad, and before I, I was very intelligent. But because of this, I believe that God has touched my academy in Jesus' name, I pray. And I also want to encourage you people that are there, that people should put your trust in the Lord. No matter what people are facing through, if you believe in God, there's nothing possible for God to do. Amen. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like Put your hands together for the Lord. I want doctor to give her that big name again. Doctor, doctor, what is that big name? I can't, I can't even, I can't remember it. What is the name of that thing? The first medical condition. Use your mic, use your mic. Give me the big name that, that the problem the young man the was The first having. medical condition is a fracture of the right knee joint. Then the second medical condition is schizophrenia. Free. Everybody say free. Free. Next testimony. Next testimony. See him. See him walking. See him walking. See him walking. Praise the Lord. Hear him. Hear the Lord him. has done it again. This brother standing before us is Mr. Dominic Anthony, 28 years old. Seven months ago, he has a road traffic accident and, and he had multiple fractures to the leg. And since that time, he had been going to different traditional doctors and all these things to, to, for healing, but to no avail. But at the prayer of the man of God this evening, he received his healing. Let us hear from him. Yabi Yesu. Now go de wa Allah so say Yen de ya kawani wan na wuri. Da na tafia de sanda gashia bani iko tafia babu sanda. Now go de wa Allah so say ya ba wa swala yan wana karfin tafia chikin suna yesu. Did you hear him? Did you hear him very well? Now go the Baba Zuan Now go the Allah the Lily Natamu Tafia Babu Sanda. Jam your hands together for the Lord. The young man said, since then, he has never been able to walk without these crutches. 
that he has no strength to walk. But look at him walking there. Put your hands together. See him walking without the crutches. Crutches gone forever. Crutches gone forever. Crutches gone forever. Broken bones joined by the supernatural power of God. What a wonderful God we serve. What a wonderful God we serve. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for tonight. We pray, Lord, that you touch every life, train us to be prepared for the assignment you have for everyone in Jesus' name. Open the pages of the scriptures to us. Match our lives with the assignment you have given each of us. And we pray that on that duty, on that assignment that you have appointed, we will succeed in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, that your word will do good in every life. I thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1 all through to verse 9. Today as we look at verses 1 to 9, I'm talking to you on the supernatural victory of God's commissioned servants. The supernatural victory of God's commissioned servants. Look at verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, minister, saying, Moses, tell me. I can't hear you now. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise the passing on of a man of God does not stop the word of God, the work of God. A servant passes on, Jehovah is still there. A servant passes on, the work of the Lord is still there. And the gospel still goes on, even though Martin Luther is gone, even though John Wesley is gone, even though the people we have known that carried the gospel torch, they've gone, the master abides, and the master remains. Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, and all these people unto the land, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, the Lord had given the promise to Abraham. And then he repeated thee to Moses. And I said, Joshua, the whole land is yours by promise. But in practice, you are not going to possess any part your foot does not tread upon. The same thing with all the promises of God. We're not going to possess whatever part our foot has not trodden upon. In verse 4, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. That is, now that you have known the parameters and the perimeter and the territory that you have to cover, I've given everything to you. It's not yours now because your foot has not trodden upon them. There shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Somebody there shout, Amen. 
as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. We don't have any fear. We don't have any concern. There's no worry. There's no anxiety. God is greater than all men. God is greater than all persecutors. God is greater than all opposers. And he has said he is nearer than the persecutor. He is nearer than the man or the woman that you may fear. He says, there shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. I received that. I got it. It is mine. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. Actually, that is the very foundation and a solid ground upon which to build every other thing. Without courage, we will not take a step. Without courage, Joshua will not face the Canaanites. Without courage, you'll be weak in yourself. Without courage, you'll be nursing the wound of yesterday. Without courage, your vision will be blurred and the revelation will be cloudy. Without courage, you'll not even want to rise up in the morning and get out of bed. Without courage, will be nothing. And it says, be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. You see that again? It talks about being strong and being courageous. And it repeats it again. Be strong and very courageous. Whatever knowledge you have without courage, that knowledge will be in the cold room, will be in the fridge, will be in the freezer. It's not edible, it's not useful, it's not profitable. You will not have strength in your backbone without courage. There's no strength in your voice without courage. There's no strength in your decision without courage. We need courage. And so that's why God said in verse 7, He said, only be thou strong. I'm very courageous that thou mayest observe to do, to obey, to carry out, to keep all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Why do we hear so much and we do so little? Lack of courage, lack of courage. A problem is not lack of knowledge. We have the knowledge. We know when to say no. We know when to resist the enemy. We know when to forge ahead and grab and grip what the Lord has ordained. But it's the lack of courage that makes us not to be able to do what he has appointed for us to do. He says, turn not from each to the right hand. When you do that, you're weak in your conviction or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest the book this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night why meditating 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 on the word of god gives us confidence gives us courage while you are at home inside your chamber you have gone over the pages of scripture you have meditated on the promises of god you have meditated on the power of god you have meditated on the on the on the precepts of god you have meditated on the possibilities with god before you came out of your chamber you're already a giant a champion and so when you come out all these things you see and the people you see they do not become an overwhelming goliath over you because you have read you have applied you have meditated on the word before coming out it says that there may observe to do 
according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thou shalt make is in your hand thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then somebody there tell me i shall have good success have i not commanded thee verse 9 be strong and of a good courage that's the third time verse 6 verse 7 verse 9 be strong and of a good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee whithersoever thou goest and the church said amen, amen. if you look at verse 9 once again if you were to turn that to prayer lord you have commanded me the highest authority on earth has, co has commanded me the highest authority among angels has commanded me and the command is clear and what i am to do is clear lord have you not commanded me i am going in the strength of that command and because you have commanded me and you said i should be strong it means i have the way with her to be strong you couldn't command me to be something i could not be you told me be strong lord i am strong i am strong i'm of a good courage i will not fear a little baby that was born last week i will not fear a little child that started going to primary school just uh, last month i will not fear a young man a teenager that is just finding out how life is you commanded me to be strong lord i am going to be strong i'm going to be of a good courage and you say be not afraid thank you lord thank you lord i'm not afraid of anything behind the curtain i'm not be afraid of anything around me i'm not afraid of anything invisible i'm not afraid of all the conspiracies of satan and those demons i'm not afraid neither be dismayed lord i'm not dismayed my heart is clear my mind is clear i know the way i am going and i'm going to reach there and then he says for the lord thy god is with thee whithersoever thou goest thank you lord you are with me you are by my side you are in front of me you are ahead of me you are on top of me underneath me are the everlasting hands lord i thank you i praise you that i'm not going to fail in the work you have committed into my hands you are reading and praying through what you are reading that's why we need to take the scriptures more seriously and as we do this you'll be stronger you'll be higher and you'll be fearless in doing the work of the lord in jesus name i want an amen from the church the message the supernatural victory of god's commissioned servants three things we're looking at number one the collective consideration of their great commission their great commission for all of them to collectively consider together the collective consideration of their great commission point number two the contagious courage of a godly conqueror the contagious courage of a godly conqueror if a leader is courageous the followers will be courageous if the shepherd is courageous the sheep the saints the members of the church will be courageous if the pastor is courageous the people will be courageous but smite the shepherd and let the shepherd become a weakling somebody that does not have any backbone smite the shepherd and let the shepherd become like an amphibian is neither here nor there and the rest of the people following they'll not have courage but if the leader has courage if the pastor has courage if the parent has courage if the champion leader has courage then the followers will be courageous because courage is contagious when a godly conqueror is leading the way 
thank God that courage will spill over to you. Point number three, the constant companionship of a glorious captain. The constant companionship of our glorious captain. Point number one, the collective consideration of their great commission. Joshua chapter one, verse three. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, he's talking to the children of Israel collectively. And so, Joshua, if you mobilize all the children of Israel and their army in particular, and you make them tread everywhere, and you tell them the direction to go, you go here, you go there, you go here, you go there, and the feet of the army of the children of Israel stand in any place, you have possessed that place. Collective consideration in our church, if we look at our states, if we look at this state in particular, we look at all the local governments, we look at all the various divisions, and we put a local church there, a local church. We're not waiting for members before we do that. We put something there, something there, something there. And our foot will tread in that place. And the transmission center will tread in that place. And the voice of the gospel will show, will come up in that place. And there's a women ministry there. There's a children ministry there. There's campus ministry there. There's youth ministry there. And there's the local church there. We will possess the land. From the wilderness. And this Lebanon. From the wilderness. The remote areas. The places where even maybe some amenities have not got to. And it says, even to the great river, and we get to the borders and the shores of those rivers, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, all the places the Hittites have said, we're here, our religion will stay here, our religion will occupy the land. No, they were there because we have not come. Once we come, Satan will relocate. Once we come, evil spirits will relocate. Once we come, all those occultic people, all the people that are troubling the people, oppressing the people, we tell them to go. Light has come, darkness must vanish away. And it says, unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. It shall be our coast. I'll be there. You'll be there. There shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. You've gone to a place and you're planting the church there. There must be a deeper life church in that place you have been passing by and you have never seen deeper life church there. Deeper life is coming there. We tried, we could not. It's because you didn't read verse 5. We tried, they drove us away. It's because you didn't kneel down and read verse 5 and pray through verse 5 that no man shall be able to stand before you when you take the word of God and you hold on to the promise that cannot fail. Show me where is the man, where is the woman that will stand before you. They'll carry their shrine out of that place. They will run away with all the things they have, everything they have planned. They'll carry all those sheds away from there. God will establish you there. And God will establish the gospel there. There shall no man, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. All the days of thy life. Somebody shout, all the days of thy life. You know, there are people, if you call them, brother, can you do this? He says, sir, you know, if you called me 20 years ago to do that, I will jump at it. But old age is coming. 
and weakness is coming. I can barely stand today, you will stand. I can barely walk today, you will walk. All the evidence of the old man, old age, that will not allow you to rise up, that will not allow you to move into the territory God has appointed for you, the Lord is going to remove everything from your life tonight in Jesus' name. He says, as I was with Moses, as I was with Moses, before the rock where there was no water, as I was with Moses, before Pharaoh who said, you will not see my face anymore, as I was with Moses, and before Og and Bishan, and then he gave the command, and all of them were destroyed and conquered, as I was with Moses. And he raised up his sand, he raised up his rod, and Joshua was conquering. And when he laid down the rod, the Amalekites were conquering. And he raised up the hand, permanently, permanent victory came, as I was with Moses. I can't hear your amen. As I was with Moses before the Red Sea, that Red Sea will part before you. Jordan will divide before you. He says, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. You see, there are some people, when they read their Bible, because they don't, they don't read with uh, both eyes, they close uh, the right eye, and they read with the left eye. So, all they can see there is what they can see with their left eye. The other people will close their left eye, and then they will read with the right eye. All they can see is what you have in the right, what you see with the right eye. Open both eyes. Your eyes will see what eyes have never seen, what ears have never heard, what has never entered into the heart of man, what God has prepared for them that love him. I can see something, the giant in you is going to rise up. Look at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, we're bred on the left eye, Old Testament, we're reading with the right eye. New Testament, we're combining both together. Open both of your eyes. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with some things as ye have. For he has said, what did he say? I said, what has he said? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's what he said in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said it also in the New Testament. And it's our collective, our collective uh, great commission. And as we're moving on, we're going to possess. Somebody there said we're going to possess. Look at Psalm 2. We're reading from verse 8. Psalm 2. We're reading from verse 8 ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession can we possess this country can we take it away from the hands of the people who are usurping authority over the country? Can we take the gospel everywhere? Can we penetrate every part of the gospel? Can we all agree together? We're going to ask the Lord and according to the promise that will not fail, the Lord will give unto us. Ask of me. Forget the devil. Ask of me. Forget the demons. Ask of me. Forget the intruders. Ask of me. Forget the people that are unlawfully sitting on the hands of the people. Ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. I see the fulfillment coming. I see the possession coming. 
and the uttermost parts of the earth and the uttermost parts of the earth and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession you must possess i said you must possess what is the possessor there it's going to happen in your lifetime it's going to happen but the grace of god is going to happen in the power of the spirit is going to happen you possess in jesus name point number two the contagious courage of a godly conqueror the contagious courage of a godly conqueror we're coming to joshua chapter one verse six be strong and of a good courage look up here if a child of god sits down by the side of the road drops his sedge and is weeping and weeping and weeping and crying and he has the bible in his hand but he closes the bible i am discouraged i am weak i don't have strength i cannot go on anymore the lord will look at him and pass by he's not taking the pill that God has given him that will make him strong that will transfer heaven's energy into his life and he's sitting down there like an orphan I am not an orphan I have a father in heaven is the creator of the heavens and the earth I have a God in heaven is the one that makes the weak strong I have a God in heaven is the creator of the heavens and the earth and if there's any sickness any weakness is he can take everything away in one moment of time you have a father in heaven he will not leave you alone he will not abandon you by the wayside and he has told you he has something for you he says get this and be strong swallow this and be courageous get this one inside you and uh, meditate on the word of god i've given you that word is a creative word it has created power it will recreate you tonight in jesus name be strong i am strong I am strong and of a good courage for unto this people shall thou, 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 the work the Lord has given you, nobody else will do it. The assignment God has for you, nobody else will replace you. Yes, God has a thousand people that can do that work, but he has decided in heaven that you are the one to do it. I will. Somebody there, I will. You will in Jesus' name. Thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong. Only, you don't need any other thing. Be thou strong. Only be thou strong and very courageous if you are strong and courageous you will see the victory you'll possess the land you'll have everything the lord has for you in jesus name that thou may observe to do all the law which moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it to the right hand don't deviate don't be diverted don't be distracted or to the left that thou mayest prosper congratulations you will prosper that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest verse 9 have i not commanded thee have i not commanded thee when god has given you a commandment and you are about that business about that work and somebody comes to challenge you why are you doing that who sent you to do that your point to the almighty the one that will crush and conquer every opposer 
he told me to do it if you have any question ask him if you have any misgiving ask him he commanded me that this is what you do and so if you have any challenge don't ask me don't talk to me ask him if you go to ask him he will make you one of the people that will carry out the vision have not i commanded thee be strong and of a good courage be not afraid lord i am not afraid the lord is by my side i'm not afraid the lord is going before me i'm not afraid the lord is coming behind me i'm not afraid his umbrella is over me i am not afraid he that touches you touches the apple of his eye i am not afraid somebody shout i'm not afraid be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is for the lord thy god is is with thee whithersoever 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 thou goest as we're going back home today no accident on your way no evil personality in your way you stand in the morning and then you have your megaphone microphone whatever and you are beaming forth the gospel no harm will come to you in the night you are going to bible study you are coming from bible study no harm will happen to you and you are dutiful you are doing what god has called you to do no evil will come upon your life in jesus name his angels will surround you his power will overshadow you whither thou goest it will be with you in jesus name Look at the contagious courage of a godly conqueror. Look at Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 12. Joshua chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 12. In verse 12, it says, Then spake Joshua to the Lord, in the day when the Lord delivered the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of all Israel, Son, S-U-N, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Look at the courage of the man. That not just to conquer the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and all those enemies, usurping the authority in the land. Now he spoke to the son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou mourn in the valley of Ajalon. And verse 13, read it out, one, two, three, go. Again, again, one, two, three, go. He did, he did the undoable. You are going to do something. Undoable things. Well, the courage you have that the Lord has given us, you are going to command every hindrance out of the way. And they will move. Look at this, verse 13. And the sun so still. And the moon stayed until, until, until you finish hindrances out of your way. Until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jesha? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day and there was no day like that before each or after each there was no day like that before that day or after that day that the lord hearkened unto the voice of a man 
for the Lord fought for Israel. He'll fight for you. I said he'll fight for you. You don't need any other thing. He has given you the promise. The promise will not fail in your life. Verse 24. In verse 24, and it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war that went with him, come near, come near. Don't stay far away, come near. I said, come near. I said, come near and put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and they put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, what did he say to them? What did he say to them? What did he say again? No, again, the next one. I said, what did he say again? Read on, read on, read on. What did he say? Be strong and of a good courage. What God told Joshua, he made use of that and he overcame. He said, now I know this thing will work. I give it unto you. And he hear your amen. God had told him, fear not. And now he gave it to them, fear not. God had told him, be not dismayed, and he gave it to them, not be dismayed. God had told him, be strong and of a good courage, and he told them, be strong and of a good courage. You are going home today stronger than you came. Higher than you came. More courageous than you came. More unconquerable than you came. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. That amen is too small. This is how God will defeat all your enemies that come against your life. You are going to be victorious. This courage in Joshua that has passed on to me to me, I said to me, will be for all of us in Jesus' name. Point number three now, the constant companionship of our glorious captain. Constant companionship. Constant companionship. The same way you have felt his presence here, that same way you will feel his presence everywhere. The strength of character you feel here in the presence of the Lord, that same strength of character you feel when the enemy comes anywhere you go in Jesus' name. The constant companionship of a glorious captain. Look at verse 5. Verse 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee, tell me, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. A new day has come. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Look at verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, be not afraid, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. We go many places, different places. I'm going to mention something that might surprise you. You're going to your in-law to be. You want to ask the hand of their daughter in marriage. And you have heard about that father. 
and the person you want to get married to has been telling you my dad is difficult you cannot even know his mind even when he wants to say yes and he wants to accept you look at him and it's like what are you doing here who told you to come to my family you want to get my daughter he'll bully on you if you're not careful you'll give up but now you know no matter how difficult that man that woman the mother as you go there you go with victory you go with assurance I see not commanded you I see not giving you that lady that sister that daughter of the Lord to be your wife go the Lord will go with you it's giving you that man and then you are going to the marriage committee I don't know what question they are going to ask me go the Lord will be with you you're going for an interview I don't know what question they are going to ask me go and the Lord will be with you have not I commanded thee be strong and of a good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest is the Lord speaking to you verse 17 verse 17 here are the people now talking to Joshua according as we hearkened unto Moses in all things so will we hearken unto thee it will bend the hearts of the people towards you it will bend the minds of the people towards you they will not be so difficult and run you out of the calling God has given you in Jesus name only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses look at what the people are saying they say all we want to know is that God is with you as he was with Moses and we're going to be an encouragement unto you all your discouragements are gone in Jesus name nothing telling you in your mind I may not succeed uh -uh, you will succeed it's written down in heaven by God himself already he is with you you will succeed in Jesus name Isaiah chapter 41 Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 fear thou not for I am with thee fear thou not for I am with thee be not dismayed for I am thy God I will strengthen thee I will strengthen thee yea I will help thee yea I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness he will be with you verse 14 fear not thou one Jacob and ye men of Israel I will help thee says the Lord and thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel behold I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having tears the devil will not knock your teeth away thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and thou shalt make them the hills as chaff thou shalt find them and the wind shall carry them away and the one wind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord God will put testimony in your mouth and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel the Lord is going with you you will not fail he will not fail you Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7 but the Lord said unto me say not I am a child for thou shalt go I will go 
thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to deliver thee says the Lord then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me behold I have put my words in thy mouth you see there is she there the word of God is your mouth already see I have set thee this day over the nations over the kingdoms to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build and to plant you have a work to do it will be done verse 19 and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee for I am with thee says the Lord to deliver thee I am delivered praise the Lord I said I'm delivered praise the Lord you are delivered praise the Lord Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 21 and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked you did hear that one Jeremiah 15 21 and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible you are delivered you're set free out of the hand of the terrible they will not overcome you they will not overpower you the strength of the Lord is going back home with you the power of the Lord is going back home with you victory all the way through victory all the way through chapter 31 of Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 31 and I'm reading here from verse 11 for the Lord has redeemed Jacob and has ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he stronger than he but he has delivered you but he has set you free you are no more weaker vessel I am not a weaker vessel I'm now a stronger vessel be it confirmed in your life in Jesus name second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18 second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18 and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom you are going to read that yourself and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever and the church of God said it will be fulfilled in your life if we will rise up and take it to the Lord in prayer you will know the victory like you have never known victory if you will take everything and read everything and pray through everything you're going to have victory like you never had in your life if you believe the word of God it will never leave you it will never forsake you you're going to have strength overcoming strength like you never had in your life open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer it's a day of victory it's a day of power it's a day of overcoming it's a day of conquering it's a day for the champion open your mouth open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer supernatural victory 
spiritual victory spectacular victory open your mouth and let him hear you Moses is gone Joshua is here Elijah is gone Elisha is here as I was with them so I will be with you they didn't see him physically but he heard his word and they believed that word and that what became yes and amen in their lives. You have not seen God in the physical. You have heard his word. He has assured you, he will not fail you. He has assured you, he will not let you down. He has assured you, no enemy will stand before you. He has assured you, you are going to be victorious. He has assured you, today will be greater than yesterday. Hold on to that word. Nobody will conquer you. Hold on to that word. Nobody will defeat you. Hold on to that word. The day of your birth is recorded in heaven. And the day when you are going to leave the earth is recorded in heaven. No demon will change your date. No Satan will change your date. Everything you are supposed to do as you go into the land, the land of the Canaanites and the Hebrews and the Jebusites, everything you are going to accomplish, the Lord has recorded it in the book of God in heaven. There's no demon, there's no Satan that can go there and change your destiny. Tell him, tell him, Lord, I believe. Tell him, Lord, I accept. They will not stand before you and you will not crumble and cringe before them. You will not fall. No, you cannot fall. He has raised you up. He has called you up. He has given you duty. He has given you assignment. It will be done. It will be done. This land will be covered. This land will be evangelized. This land will be harvested. Nothing stands before you to hinder you or to disturb you. Are you a pastor? You'll be a successful pastor. Are you a worker? You'll be a victorious worker, profitable worker, productive worker. You will overcome. You have overcome already. Everything that stands before you is going to destroy. It will not fail you. It will not delay the fulfillment of his promise for you. Overcomer. 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 Whatever stands before you, overcomer. Whatever hinders you, overcomer. Whatever intimidates you, overcomer. Whatever wants to ruin your family, overcomer. And whatever wants to spoil the work of God in your hand, you are overcomer. Pharaoh will be drowned in the sea. Nebuchadnezzar will be driven to the wilderness, to the forest. Herod will be eating of worms and you will keep on standing. He has called you, he has called you, he has called you. Let no weak person, an ant, a cockroach, a little thing somewhere, make you to back out from the calling of God upon your life. Don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left. The community is waiting for you. We're waiting for the champion. Your community is waiting for you. We're waiting for the conqueror. We're waiting for the overcomer. Brother, rise up, take the challenge. Take the bull by the horn, move on. Victory has come.
sister rise up and look at the duty I bow to I bow and say yes I come this is what I was appointed for Moses is gone Joshua rise up and do the work he has called you to do Jesus will never leave you is a captain of your salvation the Lord will never leave you is the commander of his people the Lord is more than a conqueror and you are by his side a companion to him you will not fail if you will not fail you will not fail if he cannot be distracted you will not be distracted you will overcome you will overcome with Christ by your side with the Lord going before you with the promises of God as yes and amen you must overcome you must overcome you must overcome Like Joshua walked and stepped on the heads and the necks of the enemies, you will walk and step on the necks of those enemies. As God gave him the victory, he has given you the victory. Go ahead and conquer. Go ahead and possess. Ask of me the heathens for the inheritance. And I will give you all their territory. I'll make you victorious. Conquerors, conqueror. Make you an overcomer. Make you a champion. His power abides, remains with you. In Jesus' name we pray. I cannot see failure in front of anyone. I cannot see fear on the face of anyone. I cannot see defeat in the life of anyone. I cannot see turning to the right, turning to the left, and being distracted in the life and ministry of anyone. I see victory ahead of you. I see power ahead of you. I see authority coming out of your mouth. I see answered prayer. I see answered prayer. I see conquering and conquering and conquering. It has happened on your behalf in Jesus' name. Whatever conquered you before, you will conquer. Every sin, you will conquer. Every sickness, you will conquer. Every demon, you will conquer. Every power of the enemy you will conquer. I see achievers before me. Who is there? What's your name? Achiever. I said, What's your name? Conqueror. What's your name? Overcomer. What's your name? It is done. I said, It is done. I said it is done. Everywhere you go, if there's a river uncrossable, before you get there, God will make a bridge over there. You're passing over to the victory side. Passing over to the conqueror side. Passing over to the overcomer side. Be not afraid. 
be not dismayed. The Almighty God is with you. Whithersoever, wherever you go, it will start from tonight. As you are going, it'll clear every stumbling block out of your way in Jesus' name. I receive. What are you? I receive. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the calling you have given us tonight. I will thank you for the promise you have given us tonight. You are not a man that will lie. Now the son of man that you will deceive. Have you promised? It shall be done. You have said you are going to clear every stumbling block, every enemy, every challenge out of the way of your people. Confirm it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Whatever any brother, any sister, boy or girl, whatever anyone feared in the past, those things now will fear them in Jesus' name. The things that pursued them before, we turn around, we're going to pursue those things, we're going to conquer them in Jesus' name. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, every door your hand will knock at, every sinner you will talk to, every backslider you will talk to, the Lord will soften their heart and give them to Christ through you in Jesus name whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven if that sickness is on you or your wife or your husband or your child or your parents and you open your mouth to say go that sickness will go in Jesus name any demon attack any demon oppression, any demon affliction. Oh Lord, I pray as your people one by one, they open their mouths courageously and they tell that demon and they tell that spirit, go, they will go in Jesus' name. No enemy will stand before you. No oppressor will stand before you. No persecutor will stand before you. No magician or cultic person will stand before you. You're moving on into a new level of victory, a new level of power, a new level of overcoming. The miracle you have never seen before, you will see. The majesty of the Lord you have not seen before, you will see. What eyes have never seen. What years have never heard, what has never been revealed to the hearts of men, as you love the Lord, as you fear the Lord, as you are claiming the promise of God, as you are moving on in the work of God, you will see in Jesus' name. The Lord will never leave you. His power will never leave you. His grace will never leave you. Companionship will never leave you no failure again no fear again no famine again you will prosper you will succeed you will overcome it is registered in heaven it will be recorded in your life we well, thank you lord because we know you have answered in Jesus' name we pray.